Hey viewers, as usual, I'm Mwesugwa Mguwa Bosco, head teacher at Wisdom Center in Vigesera. Uh, yes, today I've again come back that we look at uh, more activities today. Yes, today we are going to look at a majorly uh, chicken farming, which is also called the poultry keeping. And then uh, we can start. Yes, chicken farming, uh, simply as we, we look at uh, where we can keep, let's say keep chickens or keep poultry. Yeah, we can look at uh, simply uh, these pictures to, for us to understand it properly or what chicken farming means. Yes, uh, we can look at this, look at A here. Uh, this is one of the method of, method of keeping poultry. You can see these are different uh, chickens uh, come to be here. This is a brooder hen. Uh, come to see, it's an incubator. Uh, come here today, can see, yes, she's feeding her chickens. This is a cock, you can see the chicks. Eggs here, this is meat, and then the hen. So these pictures can give us a view what, uh, what chicken farming simply actually refers to. Uh, when we talk about chicken farming, uh, we simply uh, mean keeping chicken purposely for, domestic, uh, purposely for uh, eggs or meat production. Yes, so somebody can simply define chicken farming as the activity of keeping chicken, okay, or rearing chicken. So chicken farming is also called the poultry keeping. Yes, this, in the word poultry keeping, there are two words. You have the word poultry. Poultry can simply refer uh, to domestic birds. So when you talk about poultry keeping, refers to rearing of domestic birds. Uh, majorly these birds can be reared uh, for eggs and uh, meat production. But as we go on, you're going to see other different kind of purposes. But remember, chicken farming and be, uh, is the rearing of chicken. Simple, as simple as that. Yes. Um, then uh, we can move on. Yes, so uh, once we rear chicken or we keep chicken on our farm with their different, actually, thing to look at, like here, I want to look at the conditions of a, of a good chicken house. If you are to rear, or to rear chicken, let's say poultry farming, we need to look at uh, the chicken house, okay, which is also called a coop. So I'll uh, just look at uh, this structure here. These structures and see, okay, uh, this is a coop or a chicken house. Look at this one also is a coop or a chicken house. Yes. We can look at different conditions or qualities of a good chicken house. How should it look like for to raise uh, your chickens properly? Yes, so look at uh, the following you can see. Uh, the chicken coop should be in a place that is easy to get to for the farmer. For example, if your chicken coop is in a place where you can't easily get to easily, it will become easy for you to provide protection or let's say feeding them, but it's a place where you can easily get to. That's very important. Still, a chicken coop or a chicken house, yes, should be built where there is a good drainage to prevent water logging. Uh, in places which can be filled with water, you find that uh, uh, this, let's say in case there are chicks, they can easily actually get diseases. They can easily end up, end up losing them. So it should be built on a surface, on a place where there's good drainage that's not waterlogged. And then uh, we can also look at another condition of a good chicken house. Yeah, we should say it should be adequate lighting for the birds to feed. Majorly uh, in the I uh, will look at uh, look at these chicken houses here. These two, yes, you can see there's enough light into them, so the ch the, the, the chickens can have enough light. They can see properly when, when they are feeding. This helps us to pro to avoid uh, poor devices, which are the bad habits in birds. Yes, and like further packing. Yes, in the case they're in dim light, they can't easily uh, do well. You find they can go and develop. Uh, bad habits, okay, like feather pecking, tall pecking. 
Yes. So to avoid that, we should have the chicken house getting or having enough light for the bird to see. Yes, then uh, we should say the next pan can be uh, the open side of the chicken house should face away from the direction of, of the wind. Check on this. Yeah, this prevents direct wind into the into the, the house or the chicken house. So these are qualities of a good chicken house. If you are to plan or to have, let's say, to do chicken farming, please always check on these conditions uh, to have uh, your birds doing. Uh, then uh, this can take us to the types of chicken. Okay? Uh, okay, uh, we simply look at, just have it here. Talk about types of chicken. Uh, Majorly, uh, these ones, we can uh, group them depending uh, or following uh, their purpose, okay? Or why we keep them. So, like, uh, we have birds, which we keep, uh, let's say, uh, we, we keep uh, for eggs. They lay eggs, for laying eggs. These can be called layers, okay? Layers. We shall see, uh, this will be uh, uh, birds that lay eggs or egg-laying breeds, Okay? Yes, so they are purposely kept for laying eggs. These eggs can be sold, uh, can be incubated, and then turn into chicks. Okay? Then uh, the next breed or type of chickens uh, can be the broilers. Okay? The broilers, as we go on, you will see these are purposely kept or reared, yes, for meat. Uh, these are actually good, they are meat producers. Yes. The number three, uh, the third type of chickens, this will be the dual purpose. Dual purpose. Okay, you can say dual purpose chickens, dual purpose breeds. Okay, that's say chickens. Yeah. So the purpose breed or the purpose chickens are uh, simply from the word purpose. This means uh, you talk of, okay, dual, true. Okay, you find it's a combination of the layers and the broilers, whereby they can provide us eggs and also meat. So these are the purpose chickens. So we look at the three types of chickens. We simply classify them basing on their importance. As we said, Yes, that are the layers for eggs and broil the, the, the broilers for meat and the purpose for both eggs and meat production. Yeah, let's come back this way. Yeah, yes, this is what we've been looking at, the types of chicken or chicken breeds. We, the major three types, as we said, we have layers. These are also called the egg-laying breeds, yes. Then you go to number two, as we discussed, you say that broilers, that for them, they are meat Okay, production, for meat production. So they can also be called meat-type chickens, okay? Yes. Uh, then uh, the third one is the dual-purpose chicken. You can also call them meat and egg bread. So simply we have this, each type has got two names. So it's like here, layers or the egg-laying breeds. The broilers or the meat-type chickens. And then the third one, the dual-purpose chickens or meat and egg breeds. Yes, uh, this uh, will take us to the examples in H. Like here, you can look at the layers as we discussed about layers. We say layers majorly are for uh, egg production. So you can look at examples here. Look at this. This are uh, the, the white leghorn, the, the Rhode Island red, you can see, and then the New Hampshire. Yes, look at their size. They are, okay, smaller in size, compared to the, to the broilers, which are large in size. Yeah, okay. So when you ask to give examples, okay, of layers, you can simply say the white leg on the Rhode Island red, the New Hampshire. Then, uh, yes, we can move on. Uh, when we are just li look, leaving the layers, you can look at the next type, which is the broilers. We say these are meat type of chicken, they are for produ meat production. Yeah, as we, we talked about layers, layers for them, they are smaller in size, but coming to broilers, broilers, these ones, since they are majorly kept for meat, you find that uh, uh, they're large in size. Look at the broilers. Broilers grow faster than la layers, and then they are also heavier. That's why I said they are larger in size. 
for them to be able to provide enough meat. And uh, you can look at the examples. This will include the, the Corns Cross, a Light Sussex, the Corns Rock, the Jersey Giant, among others. Yes, you can look at them here. Like I see, I talked about the, the, the Corns Cross is here. You can see its size. And the Light Sussex, look at the size. If you compare to the layers, these are larger, they are heavier. They have more meat. Then look at the corn shock. Okay? So these are life examples. You can look at uh, the, uh, the broilers. So broilers are purposely kept for meat. These are meat type breeds. Uh, yes, uh, if you are to go on, we, this can take us the third type as we discussed the other side. Yes, uh, they do purpose. They are kept for both meat and eggs as we discussed. Yes, if you look at the size, they are, they are medium in weight, okay? Compared to the, the, the broilers and the layers. So this can be uh, you red for meat and eggs. So this is very important to note. You can look at, uh, yes, see here, uh, the black up. Check here, the Akona, and then the Minoka. You can see these birds, okay? Uh, they are... The size, their size, if you compare uh, to, the, to, the, to the, the, the broilers, okay? You see the broilers in size, you can see. You compare these ones, you can see these ones are, are smaller, yes. Uh, so, but uh, if you compare the three, this would be medium. So the layers are smaller, and then the, when you come to the, the purpose, they are medium. And the broilers, for them, they are larger, they are heavier in weight, okay? So uh, having looked at different types of chickens, okay, uh, we can now look at uh, chicken production. Yes, so we see how the chickens are uh, reproduced. Let's say, uh, yes, uh, increase in number. Uh, last time uh, we looked at uh, uh, the production, reproduction, product, reproductive modes of birds, and we say that for birds like chickens, they are oviparous, meaning they lay eggs. These eggs hatch at a later time. Yes, so uh, you can look at, uh, okay, look at the, these, these chickens here, the hens, then look at the chicks, they are feeding their chicks. Uh, yes, so uh, when we talk about production chickens, we say this involves laying eggs followed by intubation. Well, actually, we said here that uh, uh, for birds like chickens, uh, yes, and other birds, uh, they lay eggs. In other terms, we can call them oviparous animals, which means they lay eggs. These eggs hatch at a later time. And uh, that is after intubation. Well, we shall look at uh, this term intubation, but simply can refer to providing conditions necessary for eggs, eggs to hatch into chicks. Uh, this probably take, probably take about uh, 21 days in chickens. If you go to uh, birds like, like ducks, they have like uh, 28 days, or we can serve a full month. Yes, that's 28 to 31 days. Yeah, simply you can say one month or 28 days in case of ducks. Um, but for this case of chickens, they take 21 days to hatch. Eggs take 21 days to hatch. So this is very important to note. Uh, yes, we can move ahead and look at now laying eggs. Okay, which is of a parity, of a parity. Yes, hens are the ones that lay eggs, simply. That's in chicken farming. The eggs should be laid in nests, okay? Yeah, if there's a lot of chickens, what should we do now? The eggs should be collected at least three times a day. Yeah, this way, the eggs cannot get dirty and broken. So uh, when... Uh, when, when uh, your, your, lays, your hen lays eggs okay, in a nest, what should you do? And remember, to collect your eggs at, at least three times a day. This helps to avoid the eggs getting broken, uh, to avoid bad habits like, uh, like egg eating. Yes? And again, well, we should also note this. Bef uh, once you see your, egg, your, your hen is showing signs of laying eggs, okay? Yeah. So what you do, make sure that the nest is is actually clean and dry, okay? You can make a nest, a nest for the birds. In the case of this kind of local uh, farming, you can, that's good. Uh, we shall look at that. Then, uh, 
Uh, also, uh, this, this nail should be made of soft materials to avoid eggs from getting broken. Yes, the nest also should be free from parasites, okay? Uh, because they disturb the birds so much. And then at the end, they're causing uh, poultry diseases. Uh, the place where you put this nest, in case you have a bird at home, yes, uh, should have dim light. Uh, this helps it to be free from disturbance, whereby if there's more light, you find the hen won't settle on the eggs. And then uh, you make sure you feed it uh, with clean water and, and, the, and the feeds, this to avoid infections. Yes, this is very good, this is very good not. And, uh, okay, we can go in and then look at this, look at this nest. So at home, you can also have a bird. It's good to rear chickens, can even have a bird at home, but make sure that you organize a nest for them, uh, which is dry and clean, as you see here. Uh, it should be uh, free from pests, okay? Should have the soft materials, this you can see. This help prevention of uh, the eggs from getting broken. Yes, look at the place also should be in dim light. Not too much light, because strong light will disturb the bird, as we said. Yes, so uh, we talked about the term intubation. Intubation simply uh, means keeping eggs under conditions that allow them to hatch in two chicks, okay? And this is also known as brooding. So we can uh, be asked what's brooding or intubation, okay? Yes, but remember, brooding can also refer to the time from the, the egg, the, 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 the eggs hatching two chicks, and the time uh, of, of looking after those, chick, those chicks. That's all called type brooding. Yes, uh, but purposely, brooding can also refer to intubation, okay? Providing eggs with conditions that allow them to hatch in two chicks, as simple as that. Yes, so here we can simply look at uh, uh, the two methods of intubation. So you can intubate your eggs. Uh, there, are there are two ways, okay? Uh, one is natural and then another one is artificial. So uh, this can take us the two types of intubation. The first is artificial intubation, okay? Or artificial brooding. When you talk of artificial, that means there is uh, involvement of man majorly taking part. So uh, in this type of intubation, we say it's where eggs are put in a special machine called an intubator for them to hatch. Yes, so we shall go ahead and look at uh, an intubator. I will show it to you as we move on. It's a machine that can provide conditions uh, for, for brooding, okay? You find that uh, in case uh, you're rearing chickens, this can help you to brood, okay? Many eggs than uh, natural. In natural intubation, you find that just a few of them can be intubated properly to, to provide enough, enough uh, let's say, conditions for the eggs to touch. Then, uh, yes, we can look at uh, the natural intubation also here. Uh, simply here is uh, when a brood hen sits on eggs for them to hatch. This, we say, this takes majorly 21 days, okay? Uh, it's a natural tense where the bird actually will go and sit on her eggs. Look at this here. We can say a brood hen is one that shows natural tendency, okay, to sit on eggs for them to hatch. So when you see your hen uh, actually uh, 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 showing signs of sitting on its eggs, what do you do? Uh, make sure that uh, you, you separate, you remove those small eggs, okay, which may not hatch. Um, then check if the eggs have got cracks, remove them, and at least give a minimum number, okay? Number of eggs, yes. Uh, if uh, at least uh, if they are like, like 10 eggs, 15, that would be good. Yes, yes. If you, if you go beyond that, uh, going to 20 and what, they might be hard for it, might not be easy for them to get uh, the right conditions. And then when you go to the other side of natural intubation, it's quite easy. You can brood a number of eggs. Yes, let us look at these diagrams here. Look at this figure here. This is an inch better, okay? So uh, you can see, you can easily have many eggs here, inch better here. Uh, remember we talked of the having there is enough light here, okay? Uh, this helps, okay? Uh, the eggs actually, yes, very important for the light. And then of uh, course also provides some kind of warmth which is controllable, okay? From this light here. And then, uh, 
uh, we go to the next year, you can look at uh, a brooder hen, a hen brooding. This is a natural tendency where a bird sits on the eggs, okay? I said here you can put a controllable number of eggs, okay? Yes, sort them. And then uh, when you compare these two, you can find that here we can brood many eggs, okay? And then here we can brood just a few, okay? Yeah, but the advantage here that this is very cheap, okay? Anybody can do it, even at home you can have this. And these are this requires to buy the machine, make sure there's enough light in this, okay? This is very important. And um, then, uh, okay, uh, this can take us to proper feeding of chicken. Yes, uh, you need to feed your chickens properly for them to lay many eggs. This is very important. Yes, so we can look at uh, the feeding chickens. Uh, chickens uh, can be fed on a variety of feeds. Uh, okay, examples of these common feeds uh, can include grains like maize, look at millet, crust, crust cereals, uh, small insects, and the soft vegetation. So these ones all can help you to feed your birds, okay, like chickens. And then uh, uh, if you're rearing, uh, let's say, a large number of chickens, then we can also, also look at the commercial feeds. But before that, we can see here, yes, okay, these are green leaves or green vegetations vegetables okay uh, these are insects like ants they are good you can provide to your to your chickens these are maize seeds okay they are good millet seeds yes majorly cereals are very important okay uh, these are cereals are very important uh, yes feeds for the chickens yes uh, we apart we say that uh, 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 in case you want to rear a large number of birds so we need to do here look at uh, uh, commercial farming, okay? Yeah, purposely for, let's say you want to get my eggs for, for, for like say, for selling, you want to, yeah, you create employment to, to people. This is very important. So you need to think of the whole feeding. Here we shall look at feeds, uh, which you actually can be called uh, a commercial feeds. The commercial feeds are also known, known as or called uh, concentrates. These are majorly, uh, let's say, Manufactured in factories, okay? They have got a balanced diet. They have got uh, more proteins, carbohydrates, okay? The, the, the calcium, which help the eggs to be very strong. Yes, so these are very good feeds for the birds. So uh, we can check here. Uh, uh, in this case, we can look at this table here. The following table shows examples of commercial chicken feeds. Yes, we can look at uh, right uh, from the, 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 age, the age when they're young, like when they're chicks, until to the time okay, of maturity. Yeah, the commercial feeds, as we said, you can easily get them or buy them. The manufactured feeds, there's a mixture of different components, okay? Uh, the proteins, the carbohydrates, the, the, the minerals like calcium, the phosphorus, yes, they are all there. Uh, so we can check here. Uh, when you want to feed, let's say, chicks, the feeds for chicks we call chick mash. Okay? So they can ask you what name is given to the feeds for chicks. We can say chick mash. So we, are, we can say here, uh, this is on have high protein content. Okay? Remember, proteins are very good, actually, for body growth. Okay? So this helps these chicks to grow, actually, faster. Uh, so feed your chicks, okay, of about one day, okay, to seven weeks, okay, on this kind of feeds to grow faster. And then uh, uh, that, at that time, okay, leaving the chick uh, uh, let's let time or they are growing, then you go to those which are called the, the growers. So growers are majorly fed on feeds called growers mash. So growers mash, these are feeds for chickens, okay, that actually they say uh, chickens from the seventh week, the time they are about to start laying eggs, uh, if they're layers, okay? This is very important, yeah. So that time of seventh week, week to the time they're about to start laying eggs, feed them on the grower's marsh. This also helps them to grow properly, yes. And then uh, uh, next feed for the chickens, okay, will be layers marsh. So when they're at the time, let's say, okay, of, of laying eggs, they are real layers, okay? So these ones, we can feed them with layers mash. So layers mash are feeds given to layers. 
Uh, when you got the broilers, okay, when the, your chickens have reached time, okay, uh, yes, uh, for maturity, they are about rest regime or about reach maturity, okay. Uh, that's also still need to pro provide feeds, okay, that prepare these broilers for more meat, okay. So you can say uh, these feeds are introduced at four weeks and given to broilers until they are about seven weeks old. Yeah, so mainly this person was reaching seven weeks old, okay, or two months, or that or two months, which is eight weeks. You find uh, to three months, they are already ready for market. But if you feed them from the from four weeks, okay, they, re they reach seven weeks when they have got more meat, they have got more weight, which is very important if you are trier, uh, let's say broilers. And then uh, still look at broilers finishing meal, okay? Yeah, this is introduced at the seventh week, okay? Look at when they actually they are to make them fatten, okay? Yeah, to have meat. So meaning when they are actually coming actually to maturity, it's very important to feed them with broilers finishing meal. This makes them actually to gain more weight, fatten. So these are called commercial feeds, okay? So if you are planning to rear uh, chickens for commercial purposes, majorly uh, uh, look for commercial feeds. Uh, okay, and this can take us to our last part, okay, where we can look at uh, the chicken disease and parasites. Yes, uh, okay, yes, you can f have your own work to, to make kind of search, search on internet. You need to know there's a variety of, of diseases which can affect or attack chickens, okay. Yeah, you can discuss with your friend also the ways of preventing this disease, okay? And then, uh, yes, okay? Look at uh, uh, different ways of how to feed them. This is very important because proper feeding also helps to prevent the, uh, the chicken disease, okay? So uh, we can look at uh, a variety of these diseases of chickens, okay? But uh, rem remember, some of them are infectious and, non and others are non-infectious. Those which are infectious uh, can either spread from one chicken to another chicken. Okay, we can call them infectious or let's say contagious diseases or communicable diseases because they can either spread from one chicken to another. And then some which are caused by parasites. Those ones, actually, they are simply, uh, they, they don't easily spread, okay? Yeah, they are, we can call them parasitic diseases. So uh, we can uh, look at them here. Remember, uh, when you have to define a, look at these terms, okay? Uh, when you have to define a parasite, simply a parasite can be an organism that can live on other organisms for survival. So these, organisms, these parasites can easily cause diseases. So these which are, which are caused parasitic diseases, these ones, they don't easily spread, okay? Yes, but they are, they, are, they, are, you know, they can't easily be contaminated to, can't, another hen which is just, they can't be easily contaminated, but they just spread by parasites. Then those which are infectious. For infectious, you will find that uh, very quickly, yes, when these birds are together, so it becomes very common, okay, in the birds. They can easily infect other birds, okay? Um, maybe uh, let us look, uh, have a look at uh, uh, these diseases here quickly here, okay? Uh, yes, it is very common if you want to understand, okay? This chicken disease, yes, you can look at them here. Looking at uh, common chicken diseases, side like how we classify them uh, in two, two parts. Looking at uh, those that are, that are uh, parasitic, meaning they are spread by parasites, and then those which are infectious, okay? Yes, those which are infectious can also be called communicable, can be called contagious. Meaning for those which are communicable, they can easily be spread from one bird to another. Yeah, so they can ask you which uh, of these are uh, infectious diseases or contagious diseases of, the chi of chickens. Let's look at them here. Yes, uh, so number one, which is one of the common chicken diseases, we can talk about coccidiosis. Okay, coccidiosis. Yes, so coccidiosis, uh, this is a parasitic disease, meaning it is spread or it always caused by parasites. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the next, which is also parasitic disease, this will be ascarids. Okay? Sorry? Yes. Ascarids. 
Yeah. So these two, yes, as uh, coccidiosis carids, these are caused by parasites. So the parasitic diseases in the chickens. And then from here we can look at other, other two common which are infectious to give us number three. Okay? Now uh, this will be, uh, I can talk about Salmonella. Salmonella. Okay? Yeah. This is uh, for Samoa. This one is infectious. It's highly infectious. It's contagious. Can easily spread from one chicken to another. Then that can take us to number four. Okay? Yes. Uh, which is the infectious bronchitis. Infectious bronchitis. Yeah. So uh, the two, Salmonella and infectious, infectious bronchitis, these are infectious diseases of chicken. And then uh, coccidiosis and ascarids, these ones are parasitic diseases. So remember, we talked about uh, the common disease in both uh, uh, in both rabbits and the birds. So they can ask an exam, which is common in both birds or poultry and rabbits? That would be coccidiosis. Uh, if you are to look at uh, majorly uh, this, they will ask you, you need to look at uh, signs and symptoms, okay? Yes, uh, okay, as uh, we move on, yes, we, 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 we shall have that, but we can do for this time, uh, yes, as we began this, we talked about you can also use internet. Uh, find out, please. Uh, you don't need to be in primary six, okay? Or can't need to always make research. So uh, this is the video activity. Look at the signs and symptoms of coccidiosis. Look at the signs and symptoms of Salmonella, okay? Uh, look at the signs and symptoms of infectious bronchitis and then ascarids, okay? Yes. Uh, and then uh, we shall get back and discuss more of this, okay? Uh, yes, remember, yes, we say that uh, majorly uh, for salmonella and, and bronchitis, okay, they are more so of infectious. They can either spread from one place to another, okay? And then uh, uh, let us uh, uh, look at, uh, yes, since you've gone to, uh, to look at, you're going to look at, uh, the, the signs and symptoms, the, the, uh, then uh, that can take us to the prevention, okay? Yes, so for this time, uh, let us look at the prevention or preventive measures, okay, of chicken disease. Okay, this is very important. In general, you can look at this here, you can say, uh, to make sure that your chickens are free from infections, always keep the chicken house clean. At this hygiene is very important in chickens, okay? Yes, you can easily avoid, eh? Uh, parasitic diseases like uh, ascarids, very important, okay? Yes, of course, to avoid coccidiosis also, once you keep hygiene, it's very important. And then uh, move on here, and then also disinfect the feeding and watering equipment. So uh, the, the feeding troughs you use, or watering troughs, which are used to feed your chickens or the chicks, make sure you disinfect them. What do, you mean, what do you mean by disinfecting? To disinfect, use chemicals, okay, to kill, okay? Uh, to, to, to kill these, let's say, uh, the infections, okay? Yes, which can be caused uh, or spread by, 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 by the vectors. And then, uh, okay, then also say here, uh, what you have to do next thing here, the chicken house should be actually, we say, disinfected before bringing a new, Yes, a new flock. Yes, we talked of disinfecting uh, the feeding equipment, the feeding troughs, but also before bringing the chicken, okay, or the chicks into the chicken house, first disinfect spread, okay, insects in your chicken house to make sure that there are no more insects, insects that can easily uh, spread or spread this, okay, or affect your chicks. These are majorly parasites, okay? Yes, they can easily infect your chicks. So make sure that you disinfect the chicken house before you bring your chicks into the chicken house. Then uh, feed the chicken properly. Yes, your chicken should be fed properly, okay? Uh, yeah, we also say here, yeah, chicken should be given enough well-balanced feeds for them to grow healthy and strong. So remember we looked at uh, the feeding uh, the feeds for feeding chickens, okay? May look at uh, the chick mash for chicks, 
uh, the, the growers for the chick that are growing, okay? The layer, the, the, for the layers mash for layers, the broilers, okay? Finishing meal. This is very important when feeding. So if you are raising broilers, so uh, from the chick mash, then you should also provide introducing the, uh, the growers from growers, just then give the broilers mash. Okay, finishing meal. If you want, if you're rearing the layers, then from the chi the, 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 the chick mash, and then they give the growers mash, then they go to the, uh, the layers mash, okay? For them actually to be able uh, to grow properly. Uh, and then another thing here we should do, uh, we should also carry out vaccination. So uh, not, not just raising and feeding them, so uh, make sure you always vaccinate, vaccinate your birds regularly, okay? Yes, introduce drugs that can help them to, to develop strong immunity. Immunity simply uh, is the ability to fight against disease germs. So once you vaccinate them, you give them drugs, you'll be increasing their immunity against sickness. And then another term which is also very common is the, uh, we can talk about uh, quarantine. Quarantine uh, sick birds to control the spread of infections. Uh, to quarantine simply here means uh, keep, separate, keep birds that are sick in separate uh, chick chicken houses, okay? Those which are sick, keep them in a separate room, and those that are not sick, also separate, okay? Which are, can also be called to isolate, okay? So to quarantine is to isolate. So you'll be asked to define such terms, define the term quarantine. Quarantine means keeping uh, sick, let's say in, the case, in terms of bird keeping sick birds, okay, or sick chickens in separate areas. Or simply can say quarantine means isolating animals that are sick from those that are normal ones. Yes. And then this can bring us to the last part here. Okay. Uh, we look at, uh, yes, uh, we talked of, we talked of a feeding chicken. You can see here, this is a feeding trough. Okay. Yes. So this boy is trying to feed his chickens. Okay. You can see uh, they are properly fed from the feeding trough. It's clean. Look at the place. And then uh, look at figure 10 here. You can see 10, 10 here. Vaccinating hen. You see, uh, this is a vet or oh, a veterinary officer. Yes. Uh, majorly, when you want to vaccinate your birds, don't do it yourself. Or maybe you need to first uh, also go for kind of training. Okay. Uh, to uh, people who have the companies of, of raising chickens. Okay. They can easily help you. You get ready to know how to vaccinate your chickens, how to feed them. So you can see once they are vaccinated here, it will be very important to this that they cannot easily get infected. So uh, this is very important. Um, then uh, this brings us to the end of our lesson today. Yeah, uh, it has been very important that at least you have looked at uh, how we can raise uh, chickens. Uh, that's the chicken farming. Yes, I'll be back next time and look look more about this, and then uh, we see how we can go about this. So, uh, do the what what you have to do. Make sure you always uh, go through these activities we look at. That when I come back next time, we shall be at par. Yes, remember to follow us uh, on YouTube. Uh, follow us uh, uh, on uh, on our Twitter. Check uh, on our website. Uh, our website, Wisdom Center website, WhatsApp groups, we all provide you with the questions that can help you uh, to go through uh, this work. Thank you. Nice day.